And now, from your local election headquarters, the only locally produced political talk show discussing the issues that matter to you. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, thanks for being here for this week's edition of Big Country Politics. I'm Victor Sotelo. Right now, let's get to our political stories. President Trump is visiting businesses which are doing better since he has moved into the White House. The economy, the economy was among the items the president spoke about uh, during a speech at a military equipment manufacturer. President Trump took his economic message to an army tank manufacturing plant in Ohio Wednesday. Today, jobs are coming back and pouring back, frankly, like never before. Companies are coming back into our country. They want the action. Production is ramping up. The president toured the factory prior to taking the stage. He took advantage of the campaign style atmosphere to make his case for the 2020 election. Last time, you know, I said I was going to do it, but I didn't do it, but I said I was going to do it. This time, I've done it far greater than I said I was going to do it. So it's going to be really easy on the debate stage. Before leaving the White House, President Trump was focused on special counsel Robert Mueller's probe into possible Russian collusion. The president told reporters he'd like to see the Mueller report go public. Let it come out. Let people see it. That's up to the attorney general. We have a very good attorney general. He's a very highly respected man. And we'll see what happens. President Trump returns to the White House late Wednesday after attending a fundraiser. Mola Lenghi, CBS News, the White House. And Vice President Pence is also on the road. He was briefed on damage and recovery efforts in parts of the Midwest, which are suffering through some of the worst flooding in years. And an Abilene couple received a scout's honor last week and a speech from a famous face that also happens to be family. Have I done and have I dared everything to be prepared? Prepared for life. That's the voice of God to America. That's former U.S. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, the featured guest speaker at the Texas Trails Council of Boy Scouts of America Distinguished Citizen Award Dinner. This year's citizen is actually a couple, Dr. Ray Ann and Judge Lee Hamilton of the 104th District Court here in Taylor County. Tillerson is the brother of Dr. Hamilton, and the annual dinner is the largest fundraiser for the Boy Scouts of America uh, of this area, supporting an organization that Judge Hamilton says is an honor to be recognized by. And it's been a blessing to be able to be involved and to, and to do my best to, to try and make a difference in this, in this community. Um, so um, we're, we're just very, very blessed and, and honored to receive this award from the Boy Scouts of America. Well, congratulations to Judge Hamilton and his wife. Both of the Hamilton sons were in the Boy Scouts growing up. And should the state be responsible for keeping prisons cool during the hot Texas summer? It's being brought up to lawmakers, former inmates and family of prisoners are urging Texas to uh, more closely control temperatures inside prison facilities. As KTAB's West Rappaport reports, it's not just inmates who want to see that change. The summer of 2011 was just horrible. I'll never forget that. The nearly 13 years Jose Flores spent behind bars in prison are seared into his memory, especially summertime. While you're putting your new fresh clothes on, you're already sweating. At an advocacy day at the Capitol, prison reform supporters invited the public to experience conditions similar to what inmates and officers face when it gets hot. We're human beings. Legislation filed this session would require the Texas Department of Criminal Justice to keep prison temperatures between 65 and 85 degrees. They're paying their debt to society, but that doesn't mean that we treat them like a piece of trash. Union leaders for correctional employees support the initiative, saying it helps them stay healthy and prevents staff turnover. That AC will go all the way around, not just for inmates, but for officers and, and staff alike. Keeping a spreadsheet is not going to have any impact. The chair of the House Corrections Committee says it's unrealistic to expect the agency to make changes without more resources. We have not given the agency 
Correct. the resources and the direction to address this issue in an effective manner. TDCJ says it established new heat protocols last year, including heat emergency command centers and a plan to put heat sensitive offenders in air conditioned areas. Currently, the agency makes sure ice water is available 24 7. Fans are available to all offenders and they limit work and recreation to cooler times of day. The agency also provides specific heat related training to offenders and staff. Flores hopes the state will find a resolution to prevent dangerous conditions in the future. I'm hopeful that they're going to follow through. State prison officials assert there has not been a heat related death in the TDJC facility since 2012. We're told that despite a higher than normal number of heat related warning days, the number of offender heat related illnesses did not increase and has gone down by half in the last five years. Well, you may be familiar with the Barksdale Trophy. The Barksdale found its new destination last week. First Financial Bank downtown now shares it with its customers. The First Financial staff tells us they are proud to house the trophy for a while. Abilene won the trophy last year for its support of Dias Air Force Base. It has been shown at both the Abilene Police Department and Fire Departments. Some of our bank uh, forefathers, if you will, uh, started that relationship with Dice, and so it's been it's cer certainly a source of pride for the for the bank uh, to, to house the trophy. Of course, we had it for a little bit here at the on the weather desk here for a little while. The Barksdale Trophy is named for Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport. Abilene is the first community to receive the award, but it's not the first award Abilene has received for its great working relationship with Dice. All right, here's still to come on Big Country Politics. We're hearing from U.S. Congressman Mac Thornberry, who was in Wichita Falls last week. We're back in two minutes.